All right, we're gonna do lesson 10.2 and 10.3 today. Um, since they both have to do with multiplying polynomials, we are gonna go ahead and combine them. Now, remember yesterday we kind of learned about polynomials. We learned the basics about the different types, um, how to classify them by their terms. All right, so let's review that for just a minute because that's gonna be important um, in today's lesson. If your problem has one term, it is what kind of a polynomial? What's its classification? Monomial. It's a monomial. If it has two terms, it's a binomial. binomial. If it has three, it's a binomial. trinomial. And if it has four, polynomial. it's a polynomial. Okay, so you're going to hear me talk a lot today about when we multiply two binomials or when we multiply a binomial and a trinomial. So I just wanted to make sure you remembered um, what each of those look like. All right, so we're going to do something completely different than we did yesterday. So you've got to kind of forget what we did yesterday so that you can focus on how to multiply. All right, the first thing I'm going to teach you is FOIL. How many of you remember learning FOIL? All right, most of you do. All right, so good. So this should just be a refresher, but I'm going to go through it as slowly as I possibly can. All right, and remind you what each of the letters in the word FOIL mean. Now, the first thing I want to tell you, and you might want to add this to your notes, the only time FOIL works is if you're multiplying by two binomials. Okay, so let me say that again in case you want to add it. The only time that FOIL will work is if you're multiplying two binomials. If one's a binomial and the other one is a trinomial, or one's a binomial and the other is a polynomial, this this method won't work. You have to be multiplying two binomials in order for FOIL to work. And you can see the problem off to the side, x plus 2 times x plus 3. Are we multiplying two binomials in that problem? Yeah. All right. x plus 2 has two terms and x plus 3 has two terms. All right. So let's talk about the different um, letters. First of all, the F stands for the first terms. So we are supposed to be multiplying the first terms. Audrey, can you tell me the first term in the first set of parentheses? F. And what is the first term in the second set? F. So when they ask us to multiply the first terms, we're multiplying x times x. Now, you've got to remember your rule because we aren't adding in this lesson. We are multiplying. So what happens when we multiply powers with the same base? Audrey? You add the powers. You add the, uh, um, the, exponents. the exponents. Okay, so Audrey, what's x times x? X squared. Awesome. All right, the O stands for the outside terms. Can anybody help me understand what they mean for this particular problem when we talk about the outside terms? What terms are on the outside of the problem? Nicole? Good. The outside terms are just talking about these terms, not necessarily outside the parentheses, but the outside terms of your problem. So what is X times 3? Nicole? Okay, what kind of 3X? Okay, I want you to always tell me positive 3x or plus 3x or minus 3x because I'm writing down our answer, so I need to know if it's a positive or a negative. All right, the inside terms. Maybe you heard it uh, last year called the inner terms. Okay, inner, inside. Um, what terms, Eric, are on the inside of this problem? Two. All right, I got a 2 and I got an x. So when I multiply 2 and x, what do I get? Positive 2x. Positive Awesome. And then lastly, the letter L, which stands for the last terms. So what would be, Jonathan, the last terms in each set of parentheses? The 2 and the 3. And when you multiply 2 and 3, what do you get? Positive 6. Now, if I have foiled correctly, the middle two terms should be like terms. So the question that I have for you is, would I be done? Is this my final answer? All right, Sheridan, why do you say no? Because your, your 3x and your 2x, the x is in the All right, I have to combine my like terms. I have to. In order to put my final answer in standard form, like we learned to do yesterday, I've got to combine all my like terms. So, Sheridan, what would my final answer be? 6 plus 5 is 6. Awesome. Now, here's what we've learned. When we multiply a binomial, our outcome or our answer is a what? A trinomial. So if you see in the instructions to multiply the binomials and write them as a trinomial, that's what they're asking you to do. FOIL will do that. 
FOIL will take your binomials and give you a result that is a trinomial. All right, any questions so far? Eric? Okay. All right, any questions about math? All right. Example number one says find the product. Now my first question and the first thing you want to check for, are we multiplying binomials in this problem? Letter A. Yes. All right. So Emily, if I'm going to use the FOIL method, what am I multiplying first? Okay. In FOIL, the F stands for the first terms. And in this case, that's an X and an X, which gives me what, Emily? Okay, x times x is x squared. Remember, those understood ones get added together. So that is x squared. All right, Gwen, what's the O stand for? Outside. Outside. What are my outside terms? Two and be careful. Listen, look at me. they got to be on the outside of your problem. X and there you go, x and negative 4. So what do you get when you multiply x and negative 4? Negative 4x. Negative 4x. Awesome. All right, Carissa, the i stands for inside. the inside. What are my inside terms? 2 and x. 2 and x, which gives me? Um, positive, 2x. positive 2x. Awesome. And the l stands for, Michaela. Um, what are my last terms? The 2 and the negative 4, which gives me negative 8. Negative eight. Awesome. Ashlyn, is this my final answer? No. All right. What's my final answer going to be? X squared minus 2x minus 8. All right. Where did we get the minus 2x? Two, the negative 4x. Very good. The negative 4x plus 2x in the middle were like terms, and I had to combine them. So, again, my binomials became a trinomial. Very good. All right. Take a minute. Work letter B. All right, Allie, what are we multiplying first in letter B? Um, 2x two and x. 2x two and x, and what does that give me? 2x two x squared. Two x squared. Awesome. Lariel, what am I multiplying next? 2x um, and 2. Good. The outside terms, 2x and 2, give me? 4x. Four. 4x. Four Jared, the i stands for? Inner. All right, and what am I multiplying on the inside? which gives me 1x. And Emily, lastly, what's the L stand for? Okay, what are my last terms? Which gives me? What kind of two? Positive. Positive. <coughs> awesome. All right, Grace, my final answer? Where'd the 5x come from? You add 4x to 4x. Awesome. Now, did I box in the correct final answer? Yes. yes. It is in standard form. I cannot combine any further. So, yes. And again, multiplying my binomials gave me a result that is a trinomial. trinomial. All right, very good. Any questions? Now, let's look at example number two. This says use the distributive property to solve. So the question is, why can we not use FOIL? Why is it telling us to use the distributive property? So I want somebody to raise your hand and look at letter A and tell me, why do we have to use the distributive property instead of FOIL? Nicole. Okay, we are no longer multiplying two binomials. We're actually multiplying what, Nicole? What do we have in letter A? We have a binomial times a trinomial. So we cannot use FOIL in this instance. So we're going to use the distributive property. Now, before you let anything confuse you, I want you to pretend for just a second that the only thing in this first set of parentheses was this X right here. How would we apply the distributive property? Allie, how would we, just, how would we apply the distributive property with the X that's on the outside of the parentheses? Okay, what am I going to multiply the x by? I guess that's what I'm asking. Tell me the terms specifically. Okay, I'm going to do x times 5. Then x times 3x. And then x times negative x squared. So that's exactly what we're going to do. 
But right now we're going to pretend that x is the only thing out there and we're going to distribute the x. So Allie, what do I get when I distribute the x? 5x? Three x squared. Um, awesome. All right, let's look at what she did. X times five is five x. X times three x is three x squared. And then x times negative x squared. Remember, there's an understood one right here. So one plus two gives me an exponent of three. So negative x cubed. Any questions about what we did? All right, now. Normally, I'd say we're done, we'll stop. However, we pretended there was nothing else, but there actually is a negative 2 inside this set of parentheses as well. So, we're going to distribute the negative 2. We're going to distribute it to 5, we're going to distribute it to 3x, and we're going to distribute it to negative x squared. So, multiplying a binomial times a trinomial just means we're going to have to do the distributive property twice. Now, watch what I do. Michaela, I want you to talk me through negative 2. Distribute negative 2 and tell me what I'm going to get. Yeah, just talk me through the steps to distributing the negative 2. Alright, now stop right there and let me ask you a question. Alright, when I work these problems out in the way that I'm going to teach you guys, I like to line up my like terms as I go. I like to line them up uh, vertically. So, negative 10, does it have a like term that we can put it underneath? No. So here's what we're going to do. Since it's the beginning of the problem, I want you to shift on the, go to the next line and go a little bit to the left and just go ahead and put that negative 10 right there. It doesn't have a like term, but it's still there in our problem. So we're just going to put it a little bit to the left um, on the next line. Now, keep going. What's the next thing we would multiply negative 2 by? And what does that give me? Now, do you see the like term for negative 6x? So I'm lining up, the, I'm putting the negative 6x underneath the 5x because they're like terms. All right, and one more. What's negative 2 times negative x squared? Um, two positive two x squared? Good, and again, you see how I'm lining up the 2x squared underneath its like term, which was 3x squared. Okay, now all we have to do is combine these vertically. Michaela, do I have anything to add negative 10 to? No, so I'm just going to bring it down. All right, what about 5x minus 6x? Okay, you can put the 1, you can leave the 1 off, it doesn't matter. 3x squared plus 2x squared? Positive 5x squared. All right, and then what about negative x cubed? It just stays the same and comes down. It does not have a like term. Audrey, is this my final answer? Um, no. All right. What's my final answer? Why is this not my final answer? Because you have two like terms. What are my like terms? Um, 5x squared and negative x cubed. How are they alike? They are both exponents. Right, but like terms have the same variable raised to the same power. Mm -hmm. So are they like terms? No. No. So that's not the reason that this is not my final answer. Why else could this possibly not be my final answer? Because it's not in the right form. It's not in standard form. So let's put it in standard form. What would that be, Audrey? Um, negative x to the third okay. plus 5x squared um, minus 1x minus 10. There we go. We just got to flip it around. Now it's in standard form. There are no more like terms that can be combined. So that is my final answer. All right, the result of a binomial times a trinomial is a what? Class? A polynomial, very good. All right, any questions? All right, take a minute and do letter B. All right, Emily, what are we gonna distribute first in letter B? Um, the 2x. All right, so talk me through distributing the 2x. So 2x times 2x squared is 4x Good. 2 times 2 is 4, and x times x squared is x cubed. All right, keep going. And then 2x times 2x is 2x squared. What kind of 2x squared? Um, positive. positive 2x squared. Good. And then? And then 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x. Awesome. All right, Carissa, what did you distribute the second time through? Um, one. All right, talk me through that. 
okay? And remember, line it up vertically underneath its like term, okay? It'll make combining these a lot easier at the end. All right, keep going. All right, we got negative 1 times x, which is negative 1x. And then tell me how you got the 3. Good, negative 1 times negative 3 is definitely a positive 3. All right, and then all we have left to do is combine our like terms. Jonathan, what do we get when we combine our like terms? 4x cubed minus 7x right, what happened to my x squared term? Good. 2x squared minus 2x squared cancels, and we do not need 0 in our answer. So 4x cubed minus 7x plus 3. How many of you got the right answer? Great. Any questions? All right. Now, remember what I told you. If you are multiplying two binomials, what method will always work? FOIL. FOIL. Okay. However, I would, or I am going to, teach you two types of binomials that actually have shortcuts so that you don't have to FOIL. Now I understand some of you are going to get very comfortable with FOIL, you're going to love FOIL, you're going to like FOIL, and that's fine, all right? But some of you like shortcuts, and there are shortcuts when you're dealing with uh, different types of binomials. So that's what we're going to look at on this screen. All right, the square of a binomial pattern looks something like this. When you have a plus b and that set of parentheses is raised to the second power and when you have a minus b raised to the second power, I want you to think about what that means, okay? Here's what a lot of people try to do. A lot of people try to take a problem like that. They try to take a plus b squared and they try to tell me that the answer is a squared plus b squared. And unfortunately, that is not the case. All right, so I need you to think back all the way back to our chapter on exponents when I taught you what 2 to the second power actually means. What does 2 to the second power actually mean? 2 times 2. Two times two. So I want you to think about that. If 2 squared means 2 times 2, then what does a plus b squared actually mean? A plus B times A plus B. Now, if I do that, I'm multiplying what? What are those? Two binomials. Two binomials. And technically, what method will work? FOIL. FOIL. Okay? So I just want to show you that. I want you to understand that if a binomial is squared, you actually have to take the binomial times the binomial. Don't just apply the, uh, the exponent to the first term and the second term. The answer is wrong. All right, so a plus b squared or a minus b squared, it's a plus b times a plus b. All right, so that's the first thing I want you to understand. Now, if I foiled that, I would get something that looks like this. a squared plus 2ab plus b squared or a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And I want you to notice right here the first Look at the first sign in each of those problems. Do you see how they match the original problem? If the original problem is a plus, then the first sign will be plus. If the original problem has a minus, the first sign will be minus. But what do you notice about the second sign? They're both positive. They're both positive. So whether your, problem, whether your binomial is addition or subtraction, the second uh, sign will always be positive. All right, now how many of you feel a little bit overwhelmed right now? Okay, it's a little bit, okay, it's a little bit much, right? So, that's why I'm going to teach you a shortcut. The shortcut to a problem where they have squared a binomial, all right, it's a binomial, they've raised it to the second power, this is your shortcut. You're going to square the first term, okay, it might be a letter, it might be a number, but you're going to square the first term. You're going to multiply and double the two terms together. So, you're going to take the two terms and multiply them together and then double it. Now, what is doubling something? Is that squaring it or is that multiplying it by 2? Okay, you're multiplying it by 2 and then you're going to square the second term. All right, and we're going to work a problem, so don't panic. But I just want you to know, the writing in purple, that's your shortcut. Square the first term, multiply and double the two terms together, and then square the second term. And once you learn that, it'll be, you'll have it done so much faster than foiling. All right? Secondly, the difference of squares pattern, all right? The difference of squares. 
when everything in your parentheses looks the same, except one sign is plus and one sign is minus. All right, you, you understand that's what we've got set up. Okay, the first terms are going to be the same. The second terms will be the same. The only difference is going to be you've got one plus and one minus. If that is the type of binomials that you are multiplying, here's the shortcut. Square the first term, then square the second term. Now notice the sign in your answer. What is the sign in your answer always going to be? You see that right there? Now you're like, okay, how am I going to remember that? Well, look at the title of this section, the difference of squares. If I want the difference of two squares, what kind of operation is that? Subtraction. Subtraction. So that's why it's always going to be a minus sign. Again, FOIL would work. Okay, I can FOIL this right here and I can get the right answer. But if I want a shortcut and if I want to be done much quicker, I'm going to learn square the first term, then square the second term. All right, now let's put it into practice because I know right now you're like, I, I can't do this. I don't get it. So let me show it to you. Example number three says write the square of the binomial as a trinomial. This is what I was talking about earlier. All right, these are binomials that have been squared and they want a final answer that's a trinomial. So instead of writing this out, let's do our shortcut. So follow your notes if you need to, but what's the first step in our shortcut? What are we supposed to do first? Square, what is the first term? So let's square it. When I square X, I get X squared. Now the second one is the tricky one. I'm supposed to multiply the two terms together and then double that. Well, what, what do I get when I multiply my two terms together? Josiah, what do I get when I multiply the two terms together? 1x. One 1x. One X. Now, double that. 2x. Very good. 1x one, one times 2 is 2x. Two so I write down a positive 2x. And then lastly, Jared, what's the third step in my shortcut? No, we already did that. He multiplied 1 times x, and then he multiplied it by 2. Okay, we're supposed to square the second term. What is the second term? No, no, we're talking about the second term. We're talking about the original problem. 1. And 1 squared is 1. And we're done. Now, I want to show you, and I'm going to do this really quickly, but I want to show you what happens if you were to do the FOIL method. Remember, x plus 1 squared is x plus 1 times what? x plus 1. If I multiply the first terms, I get x squared. If I multiply the outside terms, I get 1x. If I multiply the inside terms, I get 1x. And if I multiply the last terms, I get 1. So x squared, 1x plus 1x is 2x plus 1. Do I get the exact same answer if I FOIL? Yes. Okay. But I can get there a lot quicker if I will learn square the first term, multiply the terms and double them, square the second term. So it's a shortcut, and it's a shortcut you're going to have to study in order to learn. All right? But FOIL will always work when you're multiplying two binomials. All right, take a minute and do letter B. All right, Carissa, what is the first part of my shortcut for letter B? Square the first term. Okay, I'm going to square the first term, and that's going to give me what? X squared. X squared. What's the second part of the shortcut? All right, so when you multiply the two terms together, what do you get? Negative All right, and then I'm supposed to double it, and what does that give me? Negative 14. Negative 14x. Awesome, and the last step? Um, square the second term. And what do you get? Um, positive Good. Remember, the second sign will always, always be positive. There you go. How many of you got the right answer? x squared minus 14x plus 49. Okay, great. Any questions on the shortcut? for binomials that are squared. You got a question? All right, yes. How do, you, how do you get 49? Because we square the negative seven. You square the second term. The third step is to square the second term. Okay. Remember, anytime I square something, my answer is positive. So that's why the second sign is always gonna be positive. All right, anybody else? Awesome. All right, now let's look at example four. Find the product. That's all it's gonna say. It's gonna say find the product. It's gonna be up to you to recognize what do you recognize about letter A? What do you notice about the two binomials? Okay, everything is the same except the signs are different. So this is another shortcut. Again, they're not going to tell you use your special shortcut here. They're going to say find the product. So if you were to FOIL this, you get the same answer. But you want to look for the shortcut. So what is the shortcut 
when it's the difference of squares? Sheridan, what's the first step? The first All right, so what's the first term? X. All right, so square it and you get X squared. X squared. All right, what's the second step? Then square what's the second term? Negative two. Well, don't worry about the sign right now. Just worry about it's two. So if I square that, what do I get? I get four, all right? But what is my sign always supposed to be? Negative. Negative. So x squared minus four is my answer. Now notice, when I'm multiplying the difference of squares, my two binomials result in another binomial, all right? And that's not something that we're used to. But when you're working with the difference of two squares, everything matches but the signs, now my answer is going to be a binomial as well. Now I want you to see FOIL. Again, I want to show you how FOIL will get you the exact same answer. X times X is X squared. The outside terms give me positive 2X. The inside terms gives me negative 2X. And the last terms give me negative 4. What happens to these two in the middle? They cancel. They cancel. So X squared minus 4 is my final answer. So again, FOIL will always work, but look how much faster we got to our answer without having to do all of that work. So again, it's just a shortcut. It's not the only way to do the problem. All right, take a minute and work letter B. All right, now I wanna mention this. If we recognize or when we recognize that we're dealing with the difference of squares and we're gonna be able to do a shortcut, we can go ahead and put our minus sign down. All right, that way we don't have to worry about any signs. All right, a minute ago, it was like, is that a negative 2 that I'm squaring or is it not a negative 2? So if we know that our final answer is going to have a negative in it, we can go ahead and put that negative sign down on paper, and then all we got to worry about is squaring our terms. All right, so Gwen, what did you square first? Nine. And what did you get? Nine. Awesome. And then what did you square? Four, okay, and what did you get? Four, yeah, but you got to work it out. What does 4t squared actually give you? You've got to apply that squared to both the 4 and the t. So what does that give you? 8. 4 times 4? 16. 16. And then t squared is just t squared. All right? Remember, if I'm taking 4t and I'm squaring it, I gotta apply it to both the four and the two, all right? Now, normally we would wanna rearrange this and we would wanna put it in uh, standard form, but when we're dealing with the difference of squares, we can actually leave it because we want our minus sign in the middle, all right? Our minus sign's gonna be in the middle, so we're actually gonna leave it as 81 minus 16t squared. How many of you got 81 minus 16t squared? All right, how many of you did not? All right, talk to me for just a minute about what you did get. Emily, what'd you get? I just forgot to apply the square. Okay, so you had 4t squared? Mm -hmm. All right, who else? Anybody else? <coughs> Josiah, what'd you have? I just didn't um, uh, square the nine. Okay, all right. Now, any other questions? And again, this is a shortcut, all right? FOIL will work every time you're multiplying binomials. Oil will work, but these are shortcuts to help you get there a little bit faster. All right, that is 10.2 and 10.3.